Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, and I hope that you all know me. I am your mentor for current affairs. So guys, I hope uh, some of you were missing me, right? But there is a good news for all of you that I have taken over the current affairs bag. Now from now onwards, you are going to see me at 7 a.m. with the current affairs. So if you want to welcome me, you can welcome me in the comment section. Uh, your uh, comments are really welcome. Okay, so on that note, let's begin with the video of current affairs. But before that, let me inform you guys that this is our application and some of you must have downloaded it already. But if you haven't downloaded it yet, so let me inform you that on this application, you have a lot of uh, features which you can explore like GK, daily GK and quizzes are there, exam updates are there, toppers, strategies, live videos, past years, everything is there. So you can download it from the Google Play Store, try your hand at the application. Uh, you will get to know a lot about our offerings, okay? Uh, before moving on to the question, let me inform you guys that these are the platforms where you can connect with us. So mobile and mail are already there. This is the application, uh, this is our website which you can explore for more offers. And we have a discussion forum as well, discussions.anujindal.in. So there you can put up your queries and we'll directly resolve your queries there. One more thing that the PDF of this session is already there on the Telegram channel. I have provided you the PDF. So just uh, download the PDF right now, keep the PDF with you and then try to understand what I'm trying to uh, convey here. Okay. So let's move on to the first question. Okay. The question is which state has launched the Sujal initiative to monitor the water supply and control its flow. Haryana, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh are in the options. So right answer here is Haryana. Option A guys is the right answer. So here understand this point that uh, there are two initiatives with the same name. One is by the Haryana government and one is by the Odisha government. And guys, the purpose of both these initiatives are also different. So let's understand the purpose of Haryana's Sujal initiative. So as mentioned in the question itself that the purpose of this initiative is to uh, basically check the water supply and control its flow so that the water wastage can be reduced and water conservation can be done. Now the purpose of Odisha's Sujal initiative is to provide the quality drinking water to all the households in the urban areas. And also there is one major difference between these two initiatives that is the year of launch. Odisha launched it in 2020, Haryana has launched it now, okay. So these are the two initiatives with the same name. One more initiative is there that is Sujalam and guys this is an altogether another initiative of the central government. Can any one of you tell me what's the crux of this initiative? What is the basic idea behind the Sujalam initiative, okay. This is your first question of the day. So I'm back with my antics. I'm going to ask you the questions and I suppose that you will answer the questions. Okay, so uh, the next question that we have is what percentage of salary will be contributed by Agni Veers in the Agni Veer Corpus Fund? So Agni Pat, Agni Pat, Agni Pat. So this is guys the scheme. I hope many of you must have heard about this scheme already. Agni Pat scheme has been launched by Ministry of Defense. I was not reciting the poem. It is the name of the new scheme of the government. So let's understand the, uh, let's know the answer of this question and then we will move on to understanding the scheme itself. So here, the right answer is option B. 30% of the uh, salary will be contributed. But what is it exactly? You will understand it once we go into the depth of the scheme. So it is a very basic scheme. There is nothing much to it. Ministry of Defense has launched this Agnipath scheme and the basic purpose is to attract the young people in the armed forces. Okay. Now young people, basically the youngsters who are in the age group of 17 to 21. So eligibility he 21 tak hai. Okay. So do remember this fact and also that the entry would be in all the three forces. Now let's move on to the salary structure. So guys, the, this is the basic salary. This is the net salary, the gross, the net, and this is the contribution that the uh, soldiers would uh, pay or give to the Agnivir Corpus Fund. Now understand this thing that the people who would be enrolled under the Agnipath scheme 
would be called as agni veers okay this is one thing now these agni veers will have to contribute 30% of their salary towards the agni veer corpus fund okay now remember that this amount will be cumulated it will be um, summed up and given to the agni veers uh, themselves after the completion of their tenure now what is the benefit of doing this the benefit is that this is the initiative or the contribution by the agni veers and the similar contribution is being made by the central government okay so at the end of their tenure they are going to have 11.71 lakh rupees okay so this is the corpus this is you can say a kind of pension that they are uh, submitting a basically a contribution towards the pension and after the four years they are going to have the maturity amount at their hands okay so take it in that manner now understand this thing that this cumulative amount will be known as seva nidhi package and it is going to be exempted from the income tax so that is a huge benefit for the agni veers one more benefit is also uh, is there that is interest is going to be paid on this cumulative amount okay otherwise summing up this is not equivalent to 11.71 lakh it includes the interest okay so this is guys the final amount no interest would be paid over this amount okay so this is the final amount that agni veers are going to get now understand that you need to remember this amount this is important okay and you can also remember these amounts because these are also important the total amount contributed by each of the parties and the percentage okay uh, which the agni veers have to contribute now there are some more facts about the scheme let's understand that first is that the agni veers are going uh, will be entitled to a life insurance of 48 lakh but this life insurance has a tenure that is four years basically during the service if an agni, agni veer dies unfortunately so the family members of that person would get 48 lakh but after the completion of the service they would not be entitled to this life insurance okay so this is just for four years one more fact that 46,000 Agni Vs will be recruited in this year. Okay, so this is the target. Okay, and one more thing that if the Agni Vs are selected for the permanent service in any of the armed forces, then the tenure of their service would be 15 years. Okay, so these are some of the facts. I hope that uh, you have understood the scheme well. Vaise to isme kuch bhi nahi hai. Just facts hain, jo aapko bahut saare hain isme, jo aapko yaad karne padenge. Also remember one more thing that in this table there are many amounts hai, which you can skip. Okay, you can just remember the gross salary. Okay, and the percentage. Afterwards, you can definitely calculate these three columns. Okay, so don't try to mug up all the figures that are there. Otherwise, you will uh, end up mixing all of these amounts. Okay. So the next question that we have here is which of the following company has invested 75 million dollars in green basket bond so here you have the five options out of which british international investment which was earlier known as the cdc group is the right answer so basically this company has invested this much in this initiative so before moving into the details of this news let me clarify two things to you First is that this is a development finance institution. So basically it provides finances to the countries, to the institutions for the development project. That is one thing. And second thing is that it is a UK based organization. Okay, it is obviously from the name itself, British International Investment, it's obvious that it is a UK based organization. And one more thing that this Green Basket Bond Initiative has not been launched by this organization it has just contributed the amount towards this point so which organization has launched it wait for that you will get to know the answer once we have completed the discussion of this news okay so british international investment uh, investment has invested this much amount in the green basket bond what is the purpose of this initiative the basic purpose of this initiative is to finance 
projects of msmes okay so this makes it stand out from the rest of the initiatives usually we see uh, initiatives that are there for the startups that are there for the innovators but here we are seeing an international uh, initiative for msmes specifically so that is something that uh, will help you in remembering this initiative better okay green basket board now the msmes will be selected from africa south asia and southeast asia and the selected msmes will get the funding through the local banks so here one more purpose would be served and that purpose is strengthening of the local banks financing in green projects okay so basically once the funding is given to the local banks and this bii says the banks to identify the green projects and then lend further to them obviously their knowledge in identifying the green projects their capacity to attract more green projects would increase and that is the underlying goal here okay apart from this do remember that this is the most important statement here out of the total 75 million dollars 18.75 million dollars are reserved for india very important amount remember moving ahead so i told you that this initiative is not by bii so it is by symbiotex okay so it is a lender and it primarily gives loans only for the green investment okay and also remember that the bii is going to provide technical assistance and every kind of assistance need money so for that bii has allocated separately a uh, dollar 520000 okay and this uh, amount will be managed by the symbiotics association for sustainable development and this organization also will look into the technical assistance okay so that is all about this news i hope that you have understood it if there are any kinds of doubts you are very uh, welcome to put it in the comment section okay so the next question that we have is uh, what was the female life expectancy at birth in india during 2015 to 19 according to the srs based abridged life tables 2015 to 19 so first of all understand this point that office of the registrar general and a uh, census commissioner uh, releases this kind of data okay and srs is basically an information system of the office of registrar general which releases this data you will get to know more about it once we reach the end of this news okay let's first know the female life expectancy rate so it is 71.1 years okay the average of the whole of india so guys this is the table that you need to know life expectancy at the national level total is 69.7 years male is 68.4 and for female 71.1 in rural area the life expectancy is 68.3 for the entire rural india and 66.9 for the males and 69.7 for females life expectancy in urban area 73 total uh, for males it is 71.8 and for females 74.2 now there must be a question in your mind do we need to remember all the figures mentioned in this table so my answer is yes okay you give such kinds of data are asked not only in your phase 1 but in your phase 2 also so be prepared for that now guys this is another table which shows you the states which have the highest and lowest life expectancy so highest life expectancy all india averages 75.9 years uh okay and this is in delhi for males again in delhi 74.3 years and for females kerala 78 years lowest life expectancy is in chatisgarh and for males also it is in chatisgarh and uttar pradesh mein uh, the females have the lowest life expectancy okay and this is the basic definition of life expectancy at birth which you can read on your own the present registrar general and census commissioner of india is vivek joshi do remember okay moving on to the next question so how much stake has total energies acquired in the adani uh, new industries limited 
right now 25% stake has been acquired by the total energies which is a france based company okay now the basic purpose of this acquisition is to enhance its penetration in the hydrogen sector okay to boost the effort in the hydrogen sector so both adani and total energies they are going to collaborate to have technologies to establish new plants for hydrogen that's the basic purpose and by doing that they are going to create world's largest green hydrogen ecosystem remember green hydrogen is the type of hydrogen where electrolysis is done by the renewable energy moving ahead world of advanced virtual experience is the digital transformation project of which public sector bank so here indian bank is the right answer now why is it in the news because indian bank under this wave project under this digital drive basically indian bank has launched this kisan credit card digital renewal scheme what is the purpose of this basically all the farmers who are not able to go to the bank for renewing their kcc they are now able to renew their cards online by sitting at their home set only this is the basic news and this is the basic uh, project that you need to know okay do remember the project and the current team moving ahead which ministry has launched netra portal so here you have five options the right answer is ministry of finance now before moving into the news let me tell you that you have the netra initiative of isro you have pre netra initiative of the railways and one more initiative of the railways which is somewhere related to it that is kavach so let's understand let's make it clear what's the difference between all these netras and then we will move on to the news so this netra guys has been launched by ministry of finance to keep a check or to monitor the line of credits that exim bank gives to other countries okay this is the netra by ministry of finance this netra by isro is basically a detection system that that detects debris in the space so that our space assets can be protected okay so this is the netra by isro that will protect the indian satellites from uh, colliding into the debris this is tri netra tri netra is basically a detection system that will be installed on the trains so that every hindrance that is there on the track can be uh, can be traced before hand only uh, before any kind of casualty takes place okay so this is the tri netra that tries to help the indian railways detect the hindrances on the track itself and this is the kavach now the kavach anti collision system aims to help the indian railways uh, get early signals uh, of the hindrances on the track as well as the new trains coming on the track so that the collision can be provide, uh, prevented okay so this is the kavach system of the indian railways so both of these initiatives are somewhere on the same lines to prevent the train accidents but this functions separately and this functions differently okay so the functions are different i hope the functions are clear to you all now let's move on to the detail of the news what's the news exactly so ministry of finance and ministry of corporate affairs uh have celebrated the iconic week from june 6 to 12 and uh, this celebration was under the azadi ka amrit mahotsav now during the celebration many initiatives were launched which we are going to talk about here the first initiative is that the ministry of finance has allowed the senior citizens who are above 75 years or who are of 75 years to seek their refund from the investor education and protection fund okay so now what is this fund this fund is basically established under the investor education and protection fund authority by the ministry of corporate affairs in 2016 and the basic purpose is to have or use these funds for investor protection and creating awareness among the investors so that is the basic purpose of this fund okay i hope that this fund is clear and this is the section of the companies act under which this authority was created now the next news is the netra i have already told you the purpose of netra 
the new e-tracking and remote administration platform. One more initiative is that the mobile application of IDRs, which is an acronym for Indian Development and Economic Assistance Scheme, the mobile application of this scheme, which is IDRs, has been launched. What is this idea scheme? Basically, under this idea scheme, Exim Bank gives loans to low and middle income countries. Okay? So the mobile application has been launched for this scheme. Next initiative is that a single dashboard for public financial management system has been launched. What is this public financial management system? So PFMS is basically the online platform under the Ministry of Finance and this tracks the expenditure of the government on the government schemes okay at every level at every stage the expenditure is tracked in real time so that's the purpose of this pfms now comes security printing and minting corporation of india which has established its minting museum at saifabad okay and it is in hyderabad a very important news it is guys remember saifabad mint museum now recently new coins were uh, launched by prime minister and those coins were for the circulation so that is one news and this is another news so from here one uh, one associated fact is highlighted and that is the coinage act of 2011 so did you know before this that all kinds of coins are minted by the central government only and there are four minting facilities in the entire india okay so at four places the government's minting office uh, offices are located and there only all kinds of coins are minted so can any one of you tell me where are these minting houses located in india this is your second question tell me moving ahead we have some magazines that were launched so this is guys the coffee table book named as arohan name hi yaad karna hai zyada kuch nahi padna isme and Prati Dhwani. So this is another book that was launched. This is an important news again. June 8 was celebrated as Drug Destruction Day by Customs Department of India. So do remember this is. Now comes the eighth question. What is the unemployment rate of females in rural India as per the PLFS port? So uh, uh, periodic labor force surveys, fourth edition for 2020 to 2021 has been released. And according to it, the female's uh, unemployment rate in the rural area stands at 2.1%. Now let's know the table. And of course, the question, uh, the obvious answer to this question that whether you have to remember the table or not is a yes. You have to memorize all the figures that are mentioned here in this table because all of these are important. Now, the tenure for which the fifth, sorry, the fourth, Labor force survey was conducted in June 2022, June 2021. NSO conducts this PLFS and the results of the PLFS are in front of you. All India average unemployment rate stands at 4.2%. For males, it is 4.5%. For females, 3.5%. In rural areas, the all India average is 3.3%. For males, 3.9%. For females, 2.1%. So here, you can clearly see that the unemployment rate among the females is declining okay so here in the all india average also female unemployment rate is less in rural also female unemployment rate unemployment ki baat kar rahe employment ki nahi so unemployment rate is less so this might be an indication of women empowerment or increased labor part uh, labor force participation rate for women Moving ahead, in urban areas, 6.7% all India average. Uh, unemployment rate for males is 6.1%, whereas unemployment rate for females is 8.6%. So here we can see that in urban areas, women are not getting employed, or rather, uh, basically, they are not finding the opportunities. Okay, so that is the scenario related to the unemployed. Now, let's see a trend of unemployment at the national level. So here you can clearly see the drop in the unemployment rate over the years. Now remember this is the first edition. And from then onwards, we can clearly see a decline in the unemployment rate. So do remember the rates for the entire uh, duration. 
नाउ अब तो प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने अनाउंस भी किया है दैट ही इज गोइंग टू अपॉइंट टेन लैख एम्प्लॉयज इन द एटीन मंथ्स तो गाइज दिस कैन बी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू सो प्रिपेयर रियली हार्ड ओके तो क्या पता आप सबका सिलेक्शन हो जाए ओके मूविंग अहेड द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज होलसेल प्राइस इंडेक्स बेस्ड इन्फ्लेशन टस्ट फिफ्टीन पॉइंट एट एट परसेंट इन मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू द हाइएस्ट लेवल इज कैश तो गाइज द 1991 and such questions are asked in the examination okay the next question is which company owns the party night metaverse platform so bharti airtel is the right answer so bharti airtel has launched this metaplex as well which is nothing but kind of a multiplex where the ott platforms can uh, provide or can show their web series or whatever content they produce okay so those ott platforms which have collaborated with extreme can uh, showcase their uh, products at this metaplex and if you don't want to go to the metaplex then you can have the virtual reality experience with the help of this party night metaverse platform okay which is going to showcase you the uh, pictures or whatever is there in the metaplex in the in your home only so that was all for today i hope that you have enjoyed the video and you have understood the content as well you are welcome to give your feedbacks and also answers in the comment section below thank you so much guys have a good day